Hi there, I'm Vincent Boss and I provide dating and self-improvement advice. And in today's podcast, we're going to be discussing Silence 2.0 X-Back Strategy. I provide audio coaching for breakup recovery, trying to get an ex back, attracting someone new, and life coaching. Visit www.dateme.tips for more details. Please check your spam and junk folders if you are expecting an email from me. So now let's get back into today's podcast. And today we are discussing Silence 2.0 X-Back Strategy. So if you have been dumped and want to try to get your ex back, you might be interested in a new radical silent strategy. In today's podcast, I'll discuss this strategy in three points. So let's get straight into this. And point number one is the planning phase. Okay, you've been dumped. Now what? Well, first of all, you're never going to contact your ex again unless they contact you first. And you might think, okay, this sounds somewhat similar to other things I've heard before. But this is a very different concept and strategy that I'm going to be explaining to you. Now, yes, it has to be generalized. My podcasts have to be generalized because I don't know your individual circumstances. If you want something more individually tailored towards you and your situation, then you may want to consider my audio coaching service. But as for a plan and a strategy regarding trying to increase the chance of getting your ex back, this is a specialist as I can provide to you because it has to be somewhat generalized because I'm speaking to everybody, male, female, 18 to 70, from all across the world. So this should give you that edge. And this is why I've been focusing on trying to develop a strategy which is different to the ones that you read, hear and view year after year after year. Yes, it involves silence, but I'm calling it Silence 2.0 because I believe it adds a lot more value in comparison to previous strategies. So please keep listening through and you will understand exactly what I mean. But yes, first of all, you're going to be implementing my version of a no contact rule, which states, in most instances, you're never going to contact your ex again unless they contact you first. That is what we're implementing straight away. Now, with that knowledge, you're now going to begin a social media detox. Without saying anything, you're going to stop using or viewing social media until further notice. Now it's time to stabilize and plan. Speak with friends and family who are unlikely to communicate with your ex and release your feelings and emotions. So first of all, it's very important that if you speak with friends or family members, make sure you choose people who are not connected to your ex. If somebody connected to your ex reaches out to you, yes, be polite, but be very, very careful. Almost imagine that your ex is standing behind them because they're likely to pass on anything to your ex that you say, but also how you act and how you come across. And that's why I suggest that you release your feelings and emotions to people who are not connected to your ex, very unlikely to pass this type of information on. Yes, you need to release your feelings and emotions, but no, your ex doesn't need to know about that. So I suggest that you release your emotion, and this is important. It can honestly, can help you get through the next few hours of your day sometimes when you discuss your feelings, maybe you have a cry, maybe you say this, that, and the other. You need to get things off your chest. You need to talk things through to clear your clouded mind, and then talk things through again when it sadly reclouds. Because unfortunately, as a dumpy, your mindset is going to be cloudy a lot of the time. And when you wipe away those clouds, they sadly will come back. But eventually, moving forward, they will become less cloudy and eventually the clouds will be gone for good. Now, any mutual friends with your ex that you do speak to, like I said, you've got to be so careful that you don't pass on information, not just from what you're saying, but how you're acting. In essence, I would treat them as if they are having the no contact rule put on them as well as your ex, never contacting them again unless they contact you first. Now, this is the time that you need to be focusing on the next stage of the plan. And my suggestion is that you plan a trip. This should last at least a few days. The trip needs to be somewhere you've never been before, but also somewhere that you feel safe and comfortable going. Of course, 
don't do something which is risky. Don't do something which is dangerous. Don't do something which goes against any common sense. But ideally, you'll be going somewhere that you've never been before. Ideally, you will go somewhere for at least a few days. It could be a week. It could be a few weeks. You know what I'm saying here? You've got to be thinking outside of a box, but making sure you are safe and comfortable. Now, I believe a trip should be at least a few weeks into the future, and you shouldn't go until you feel ready and able to go. This isn't just from a financial perspective, although that is, of course, important. I don't want you getting yourself in financial difficulty by going on this trip. But also, you need to make sure that your emotions are in check. Going for a breakup can be very, very challenging, and your mindset can be cloudy, as I've said earlier. Now, although this is somewhat spontaneous, I don't want you making any rash or risky decisions connected to the breakup mindset that you clearly and likely have. So now let's get into point number two and the second point of today's podcast about silence 2.0 X-back strategy. And point number two is positive creativity. So when you go on the trip, I want you to be creative in a positive way. Now, for some of you, this will come very natural, and for some of you, it won't. Potentially, those of you that it doesn't come natural to might find even better results from this, because as we go along, what you will understand is what I'm going to suggest you do is going to be even more unexpected. So anyway, let me clarify exactly what I mean. When you're on this trip, I want you to use the emotions, the feelings, and the experience to be creative. And I want you to release that creativity by creating something. It could be something that you write. It could be something that you draw. It could be something that you paint. It could be something that you make. I suggest that you do more than one thing. You know, maybe you write a poem. Maybe you paint a picture. Maybe you create or build something connected to where you have been. Now, like I've said, I don't suggest you just do one thing. There should be multiple things that you're doing, multiple creative outlets Maybe you write a poem on every day of your trip. Maybe you're painting. Maybe you're creating something. It doesn't matter what it is, but I do suggest you create multiple things on your trip. But here's the thing. It must be positive. It must be positive and it can't be connected to your breakup. So if you decide to write a poem, you can't make a poem about your ex. You can't make a poem about something sad. You can't be talking about something in a short story, which is clearly connected to your past relationship. You can't be showcasing yourself in a negative mindset. This has to be positive. It has to be upbeat. So whether you are writing a poem, a short story, painting a picture, drawing, maybe you're using some photography skills, whatever you are doing, you need to be coming across in a positive way. And it's got to be connected to your trip. It's got to showcase where you are. So reference where you are, showcase where you are, draw, paint, discuss, bring that into your creativity. This is a key element. You should be spending a good portion of your trip being creative. Yes, wherever you have gone, you might want to see some sights. Yes, you may want to do some things, but I want you to be being creative. In a way, this is not a trip about going on location and seeing the sites and doing the activities, although you could fit them in, like I've just said. It's more about you spending your time in a new location, taking in the atmosphere and being creative. In a way, it is a retreat. And you might even go to a retreat. You might go to an actual specialized retreat. You don't have to. You could just go to one of your family's houses that you've never visited before. You know, it could be something as simplistic as that, or it could be a lot more elaborate. Use your thought process of how you want to plan this trip. And when you go on it, I want you to be creative in multiple ways. Now, if you want support in this concept, if you want advice on how to increase the chance of getting your ex back, if you want help going through breakup recovery, then you may want to consider my audio coaching service, where me and you can speak one-on-one about your unique specific situation. Go to my website www.dateme.tips for more information about how I can become your coach and your teammate via my audio coaching service. So now let's get into point number three and the final point of today's podcast about silence 2.0 X-back strategy. And point number three is back from your trip. So when you get back from your trip, you should now reappear on social media. 
posting the creative content that you produced on your trip. However, I want you to make sure that you are not just uploading everything at once. Depending on how many things you have done, you need to be spreading them out. So whether you're posting the paintings, the drawings, the short stories, the poems, whatever it is you may have done, it could be photography, it could be something that you've made or built but you've taken a photograph of, whatever it is that you've created, I want you to post this on social media, spread out as long as possible. Now, I don't mean one post every three months, but I would say one post a week. Maybe if you produced a lot of content, you could post twice a week. I want you spreading this out so it is more likely to be seen by your ex or by somebody who may pass this on to your ex. And if and when they see what you've produced, they're going to be really, really curious. The main reasons being, firstly, you've vanished, you've gone silent, and that is an excellent expat strategy in itself. Secondly, you've gone somewhere and clearly you've been there because the content you're uploading, the creativity, is connected to that place. Your ex or anybody else who sees this will clearly see you've been on a trip somewhere. They will also know that you've never been here before because that was one of the main points of today's plan of action that you went somewhere that you've never been. So your ex knows you've never been. Your ex is going to be wondering why you've gone there. They're not going to be sure why. They're not going to understand why. And they're also going to be somewhat confused and surprised about this creativity that you're uploading. Again, this is all about increasing the intrigue. You have been somewhere that they don't know or expect. You're uploading things they don't expect from you either. Maybe it's a poem, maybe it's a painting, whatever it is, it's positive, it's about where you've been, it's going to showcase confusion in your ex's mind. It's also going to be showing them that you're moving forward in a positive way in your life. All of this intrigue and the mystery due to your silence is going to start bringing them closer towards you. Now, on top of this, I want you to reach out to the mutual friends you have with your ex. Now, remember those people earlier on, I said, imagine your ex is standing behind them if you communicate. Well, those people now, I want you to reach out to in a casual way. Just start asking them how they are. Wait for them to ask how you are back. And then you can let them know that you've been on this trip and you had a fantastic time. And when you're there, you did some photography, you did some painting, you wrote some short stories. You can put all of these things to these mutual friends who are probably also going to be surprised. They might ask, why? Why have you done this? And you say, well, look, I want to try something new. I want to explore different things. I want to try new ideas. You let them know these things. And like I said earlier, it will get back to your ex. So if it's not the social media, it will be the mutual friends. It will get back to your ex. It will create intrigue. And if it can build enough romantic emotional attraction in your ex's mind, this is when they're going to reach out to you. I believe this is a much more powerful strategy than those original silent strategies where you just go radio silent and you don't do anything at all. Silence 2.0 is about pushing forward, experiencing new things and building intrigue to the max. Again, this is a generalized concept. This might not be for you. This might not work in every instance, but as a generalized suggestion, I think this is going to give you an edge and increasing that chance of your ex regrowing romantic emotional attraction, wondering about you, missing you, reaching out to you. And that will then enable you to move into the communication stage and one step closer to getting your ex back. If you want specific, unique advice about how you and your situation relates to this, that's where my audio coaching service could help you. www.dateme.tips for more information on my audio coaching service. But what I would say is that if you use Silence 2.0 Xbox strategy, you will increase that intrigue in your ex's mind tenfold to if you just didn't do anything at all and just vanished. Some people think that's enough. Okay, go off social media. Don't text your ex. But you need to be doing more, in my opinion. And this is why I believe this strategy will give you that edge. And that's all we can do. Give ourselves an opportunity of reattracting by intrigue. Okay, your ex has decided to leave the relationship. Your ex can't be persuaded back. It has to come from them. It has to come from their heart, their mind, and from their intrigue. And this is what I believe can help you. If you believe that this podcast has helped you, then please consider buying me a coffee. The link to do so is in the description.